Hi kids, Mr. Polly here. So today we're going to continue reading this book about forecasting. So, let's look at weather satellites, shall we? So this is a satellite, in case you were wondering what that was from last time. Weather is a global event, best observed from space using weather satellites. Satellite locations. Weather satellites are man-made objects that orbit the Earth recording weather data. Geostationary weather satellites rotate at the same speed as Earth, so they are always at the same spot, 36,000 kilometers above the equator. Polar orbiting weather satellites are only 800 kilometers above Earth. They circle Earth every 100 minutes, passing over the North and South Poles in slightly different locations as Earth rotates. The United States has two geostationary operational environmental satellites, GOES, providing weather hemisphere information. China, Europe, Russia, India and Japan also have GOES and polar orbiting satellites, POES. Oh, I see, so they have satellites in different places around the Earth so that they can find different pieces of information about the weather, how they work. Satellites send information to the ground using microwaves. Satellite dishes gather the microwaves and convert them into electrical signals for computers to interpret. Satellites take visible light, infrared or thermal images. Visible light images only available in daytime show cloud patterns, storms and pollution. Infrared and thermal images available both day and night allow scientists to calculate surface temperatures, cloud heights and surface ocean movement seen by the world. Satellite images are available to everyone through the World Meteorological Organization WMO, Global Observing System. This operation between countries allows for more accurate global weather forecasting. Apart from its 11 satellites, GOS also has 11,000 surface stations and radars, 900 mic uh, radio sounds, which are the weather balloons if you remember. It's a bit hard to see, isn't it? There we are. 3,000 aircraft, 900 buoys, and they're things that float in the ocean. And 7,000 ships, which provide thousands of weather readings each year. Satellites are able to detect ozone levels and other gases. They also detect the amount of water vapor in the atmosphere. Did you know, using infrared images allow meteorologists, so that's someone who studies the weather if you remember, to track weather throughout the night. The black and white images can be colorized for easier identification. So look, here's a bunch of different things that people use to gather information about the weather. So let's zoom in on that. I don't know why there was a sound effect. So look, we've got polar orbiting satellites. So these are satellites that stay above the Arctic and Antarctic. And I guess they send information to these various things here, so it's to aircraft ocean data buoy weather ships and also satellite ground stations hmm okay so i can see why this information would be useful for those things right like if you're flying an aircraft you definitely need to know very accurate information about the weather because if you imagine like if you there's a big thunderstorm for example you definitely don't want to fly through that because that could be quite dangerous and of course the satellite ground station which would pick up the information from the uh, satellite would relay it back to the aircraft as well to make sure that they know. We've got ocean data buoys. So I imagine that, so you can see that's floating. So I'd imagine that that would be able to tell, like if it's rocking a lot, they would know that there was a uh, storm. I assume it would be able to take the uh, air pressure, which would tell them about the wind, uh, take the temperature, the uh, amount of water in the air, so the humidity. And the same with the weather ship as well. I'd imagine that they launch weather balloons from there as well so they can get high up uh, information about the air. And we've got the geostationary satellites. So if you think about it, they, they stay in one position around the Earth. So they'll give you, say, say there's one flying above, I don't know, uh, Nepal, then it would always give us information about that area because it would be watching that one particular area of, of the world all the time. So we've got a weather radar, and we've got these automatic stations, and this is the NMHS, the National Meteorological and Hydrological Service, which I assume is in the USA. 
upper air stations and surface stations. So this one I quite I find quite interesting having a weather radar, and what that would do is it would bounce radio waves off of uh, clouds and storm clouds and things to know how far they were away. But I imagine there's a whole bunch of different functions that these things all have. So wow, it's actually quite an, uh, an interconnected system, isn't it? Very, very complicated. So, actually, I think that that's probably enough for today's video as well. So I don't want to give you uh, too much information, because otherwise I think you'll get overwhelmed. So, yeah, I find that quite, quite interesting. And um, I always think it's interesting to think about these uh, different systems that we have around the world that influence our daily lives that we never get to see. Like I'm sure when you turn on the news uh, or the weather um, at home, you don't think about all of the different uh, satellites, weather stations, balloons, etc. that go into making sure that that's accurate. And you think this isn't just, you know, one weather station, you know, just the Hong Kong Observatory doing this, they have to convey their information and relay it to people around the world to get an accurate picture. So it's, a lot of these things are much more complicated than, than they would seem on the surface. I hope you find that interesting as well, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.